Goo Goo and Gaga and everything was cool. They were like, yay, come here. so cute. But the moment we cried out, you know, if our parents were at like a nine at stress level and then we had a need and we were upset or afraid or whatever, and we cried oh, out. With like negative. Negative emotion, which is such fucking bullshit. It's all emotion and it's all beautiful. Oh, it's when all we were young babies, yeah. It's all Energy in it's motion. Something. That's right. And so when we expressed that quote negative emotion as young children, if our parents were already stressed, it's all good. I'm I so love my sorry. dogs. She's Don't out. worry about it. This is part of it. If you had been here earlier, you would have heard my chickens. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You like chickens? Yeah. Oh my God, I love chickens. Chickens, dogs, and bees, girl. We have a little farm over here. Oh, cute. I love yeah, that. it's sweet. It's sweet. So anyways, we're young children. If our parents were experiencing stress, which all of them were, 100% hands down. I mean, if they you were... live in America, you're stressed out. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, 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 and if you live on the planet, we're all human. We're experiencing stress all the time. That's part of being a human you're, being. You're so right. You're 100. Right? Yeah. Especially in this culture. Especially in this culture. Um, but so if you're a young little baby and you cry out because of with this, quote, negative emotion and your parents are already at a nine of their stress level and then your cry adds to their stress, what are they going to do? They're going to look for a way to get you to be quiet. And so they say to you, shh, shh, shh or stop crying or they yell and at a really young age we learn ooh i my life depends on that person on that primary parent or primary parents primary caretaker i cannot survive without them i can't walk i can't run i can't feed myself my life depends on them being okay and I see that when I cry out with a need, that it makes them not okay. And so I learn, whoop, okay, I need to push this down. I need to push this down. And we become adults who push, who, who, are, who have a lifetime of pain, fear, doubt, resentment, jealousy, all natural human experiences that are just lodged in our system. And then the minute we slow down, the minute we sit for a meditation or we go get into a bathtub or we lay down to go to sleep at night, all of that stuff just comes rushing up and overwhelms our system. And then if we don't have the tools to deal with it, if we don't have the tools to sit, we're going to medicate. Period. We're going to distract. Yeah. 100%. So you want to talk to them about the sanctuary challenge that you put together? Yeah, girl. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just let the people know what's up. What are, what's your, your what's... brainchild looking like? <laughs> this is our logo. Cute. Um, the Sanctuary Challenge is a... If only I, I had... If only I had the hair to All toss. Hair. You can toss it for me. Um, <laughs> if only... Uh, so the Sanctuary Challenge is free, firstly. I believe self-care is always free that what we've talked about, there's always people marketing for us to buy stuff to take care of ourselves, which can create this belief that I have to buy stuff in order to take care of myself. And the truth is self-care is free. I just need me and a little bit of space and the tools. So that's what I'm trying to provide people is tools to learn the practices and then communities for accountability. And we'll get into that after that. So the Sanctuary Challenge is a 60 day commitment to five daily self-care practices. Now. I know that people are hearing 60 days and five commitments and it's like, what? how the hell? Yeah. I can't and even get out of bed sometimes. That's right. Welcome to being a fucking human being. Right. And so what I'm suggesting is this is like the prescription. Everyone listening to this is an adult who can take from that and go, you know, five daily commitments is too much for me. I'm going to start with one or two. I'm gonna try it on for a week and then maybe next week I will add a second or 60 days is way too much for me. I'm gonna start with one day and then I'll see you about a second day, right? Mm -hmm. I just wanna give you the tools and, and one would think that our goal with the Sanctuary Challenge would be to get, you know, you mentioned that accountability tracker that people can download on the website. One would think that the goal would be to check off every single practice for 60 days. That is not my goal for people. My goal is that one day 
in the 60 days you check off every box. That to me is the big win. Yeah. yeah. And so the five daily practices are a guided morning meditation that we created for people, which is beautiful, downloadable on the website. So good. I've been doing it every morning. So good. How beautiful That's is that cello? It's so beautiful. And also like the mantra that you propose, like the I am here, that helps me so much. Like even if I'm not specifically listening to your meditation, like just hearing that med hearing that in my mind and every time that my mind begins to wander, just repeating to myself, I am here, I am here, I'm here. I'm in this moment right now, I am here. You know, like that yes. it really does bring me back to yes. center and really helps me kind of work through the, the mechanical mind that just, yo, that bitch doesn't shut up. That's right. That's right. Which is why we got to counterbalance her. Uh-huh. Right? We actually, I think I mentioned to you, we were writing a song with, uh, did I tell you about this? With Leanne Rhymes and my oh, friend yeah. Connie, whose artist name is Milk. And the song, the chorus goes, um, what is here is always changing, but I am, I am here, I am here, I am here still, I am still, I am still, I am still here. And it, yeah. that's the whole theme of the song that I want you and I to write a song too for this thing. Oh, yeah, we gotta write a song for sure. Yeah, we gotta do. So, um, morning guided meditation. 30 minutes of exercise, whatever that means, putting on a, your reggae song and dancing around your house and just like getting funky or going for a run or doing your yoga or whatever, 30 minutes of exercise. Healthy eating and water drinking, which to me just means eating more food that comes from the earth. The earth is intelligent. It puts that intelligence into our food and then we can eat it. Less processed foods, more foods that come from the earth. Yes. Four yeah. like is my energy. Yeah, it's like we we're given it. It's right here. It's just like being given to us. And then for whatever reason, human beings like process it and kill it. And it's like, just eat the food that comes from the earth. Yeah. And you're going to feel good. They gave us seeds with crazy intelligence in them. And they make trees. Simple. <laughs> it's simple. So simple. Yeah. So the fourth is what I call goddess time. Whether you are male, female, uh, it does not matter. Your gender does not matter. Goddess time is an opportunity at the end of our work day or our mom day or our dad day or our looking for work day, um, our writing day, our sessions day to recognize that all day long I've been accumulating stress. And what we typically do is we take the stress of the day, we bring it into the evening, we bring it into the bed, and then we take it into tomorrow. And then suddenly we're alive for several decades and we have several decades of stress that's living inside of our body. And we wonder why we're so anxious all the time. Or sick. Because no one, or sick, that's a big one. Or sick, because disease comes from dis-ease. Yes. You know, A Course in Miracles says that sickness is caused by a stress that we put on the body that the body was never meant to handle. Facts. Whether that and comes from this lifetime or past. That's right. That's right. And that my, I believe that the biggest stress we put on our body comes from, ready for this, the belief that we are the body. Mm. That's the biggest stress we put on the body is forgetting that we are actually the intelligence that inhabits this body and gets to use this beautiful body as a tool, as a vehicle for learning, but that we are not the body. We are so much more powerful than just our physical musculature. The body is a vehicle. That's, That's right. why it's like this world of illusion that we live in really convinces us that our body is everything, right? Yeah. So I've, I've personally struggled majorly with body image issues like my whole entire life like ever since I got called fat by a kid I like in <laughs> fifth grade like that shit fucked me up for life like, yeah and it's like understanding to love my body is so much more than looking good in a fucking bikini like understanding that if I have a functioning able body that is carrying out its natural processes and keeping me alive like that is the blessing and that is what my body's for my body is a vehicle through which my soul travels it That's and right. being healthy doesn't necessarily mean it, it will a general public you know what That's i mean right. it'll be on sports illustrated or it'll be on 
you know what I mean? Like all these diet shits that we see everywhere or even better, there's so many people that have so intense, such intense body dysmorphia because all they're seeing all day long are edited, face tuned, right. pictures of people. That's the right. people that you, whose body you look at and admire, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them don't even look like that in real life. You and if they I mean? do look like that, they look like that for one week during the photo shoot. Or from a certain angle. You know and they I'm didn't saying? eat all week. You know, and so it's like, there's so many unhealthy fads and unhealthy approaches to what it means to have a body, what it means to love our body. Because I had, I had a really tough time with this. To this yeah. day, I had a tough time with this. I'm not even gonna lie. Is like, I wake myself up every morning and if I'm looking in the mirror subconsciously, I will pick myself apart. Like I will pick myself apart and it's not even conscious. It's legitimately not even conscious. I have to interrupt those thoughts and be like, yo, yo. you're standing. Yeah. You are standing. You are yeah, able to miracle. Walk. You are breathing. Yes. You can, you can see. You can yeah. hear. You can taste whatever it is that you're about to taste. You can smell. You can move. You can flow. You can dance. You can sing. You're not, you're gonna, you're not the best dancer in the world. You That's can do right. You, want, you know. That's right. And that is the blessing. Having yes. a, a functioning body, and that's not to say that's not to be ableist in any way, because there are plenty of beautiful bodies that do not function exactly like all of our able bodies. Amen. Bodies. Amen. And guess what? Your body's still carrying your soul and your body is still working with you or you're working with it to, to, you know, be alive and present in this world. And that is, that is the beauty is the fact that you have a seat for your soul in this realm that yes. is carrying you through life. That is what body positivity needs to be about. Man. Cause That's it's not right. about the shape that you are. It's not about, you know, what, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like it really isn't. It's about, having a vehicle for you that you're that you're able to you know navigate this world in that's literally all it is about that's right it's about realizing that your body is a miraculous blessing it is the most miraculous thing that could exist trillions of cells all working together in perfect concert to allow you to do everything you just said and to allow you to witness and take in this unbelievable natural world and also to be able to take in the miracle of another person. Mm -hmm. It's such a gift and it's so small but powerful. powerful. The way that ego brain says you're ugly, you're fat, you don't look like this, they're not gonna love you. And again, that comes from our early childhood trauma where we learned that we are not deserving of love and belonging exactly as we are. And we learned that we have to shape ourselves, literally shape ourselves into a certain kind of thing in order to be deserving of love, respect, intimacy, um, admiration, and success. Mm. And it's fucking bullshit. Here you are is. deserving of love because you exist. You are special because you exist. You are a gift because you are breathing, you are alive, and this grace of God has bestowed us with the gift of being alive, and that little voice in our head that just starts picking at us, thank God, Lauren, you have the grace and that you've given, given yourself the practice to notice it when it's doing its thing mm -hmm. and to go, nuh -uh. Yeah, not today. I interrupt, I interrupt those thoughts now. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, it's so ingrained. I'm a fucking. I'm in the public eye. You know what I'm saying? There's people commenting on my body all day long. There's people commenting about how I look all day long. There's and I. I remember growing up, I would see tabloids with um, women's pictures slathered on them, um, and it would be like this body's good, this body's not, and all of these pictures would be taken of these women. First of all, without their consent, and second mm -hmm. of all, from an incredibly like unflattering angle of course you know what i'm saying like these people these photos are not done by professional photographers they're done by stalkers voyeurs yep. which yep. are called paparazzi yeah and and literally for me as a little girl who wasn't in the public eye yet i would see those pictures and i would be like fuck i can never look like that mm -hmm. i never want to be caught looking like that right Oof. because that's what those things teach you they teach you that a normal body having fun at the beach is disgusting that yep. someone rated it a 10% or a 2% or they said hot or not and it was a not you know what I'm saying is those comparative especially for women or femme body individuals like you know like it it ingrains in you that that shit ingrains it in you from taught from a yep. tiny tot you're already thinking like 
like people are already commenting on your body when you're yep. when you're an adolescent when you start going through puberty you're still 13 years old and you have older men commenting about your body you know what i'm saying yeah. that shit really causes or even women commenting about your body you know like girl like i remember growing up on facebook they had you know hottest bodies and like they would put all the girls who had the best bodies and they would you know the best hair and the best this and the best that all these like let me rate people's attractiveness according to european white supremacist standards thank you, you. Know what I'm saying? and it's just like there's just no and even a lot of europeans don't even meet the fucking european standard you know what i'm saying it's idyllic and it's not even realistic so it, it's just all of those things aren't real they're yeah. things that are given to us that we buy into bullshit yeah yeah Amen. And and to the women, like, I can't even relate to the amount of body shaming. And as a gay male, there was a thing that happened in gay culture, especially when the AIDS wow. epidemic hit. Real shit. Well, when the, and I never understood this until I started kind of looking at it. When the, when the AIDS epidemic hit, there was this belief, because no one was helping the gay community with trying to survive HIV AIDS. And so there was this idea that if you could, because they were losing weight so fast. So there was this idea if you could build muscle that you would kind of live a healthier life. Wow. And then I grew up in this gay world where every image of men, when I, whether I was looking, whether I was a young 13 year old closeted homosexual that only found the opportunity to feel intimacy when I was looking at porn. And I was looking at these men who were objectified for their abs and their chest and their biceps and their legs and the big muscles. And it developed a belief within me that I have to look that way in order to be loved. And I already felt like I'm not allowed to be loved because I'm gay, right? And, and I'm ostracized and I'm different and no one's gonna love and accept me. And, and it's, 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 it's such a travesty that we grow up in that culture which is why it's even more important that you and I are having the conversation that we're having today to say to every single one of you who are listening to this right now, you are fucking perfect. You are beautiful exactly as you are. Not losing one pound is gonna make you more lovable. None of it. The person that needs you to look a certain way in order to love you is not your person. The person who's gonna love you for who you are so and recognize the, yeah I don't, that is the real that's shit. not your person if anybody's telling you that you need to look a certain way or be a certain way in order for them to love you that's not bye your, bye that's not your person. thank you <laughs> bye because you know what they're saying what they're saying is i'm so insecure about myself that i need you to look a certain way because you represent a part of me and i'm so insecure that if you don't look perfect then oh, I don't believe that I'm deserving of love and respect in my community. It's mm. such manipulation and it's so deeply I think that happens it's with parents too. It's so important easy. that we all wake up. Yeah. I think I think that, that that also happens like with parents. Oh my god. Like who you're supposed to be on to you, you know? Like never letting you make your own decision about your own <laughs> life because you're essentially an extension of their parenting. You know That's right. I mean? So it's so ego based a lot of the ways that people project all of these all of these things that we're talking about are projection that's so right an illusion of a world that again tells you these things to sell you things to that's right. commodify your existence that is the only reason that all of these standards exist that's the only reason racism exists that's the only reason say it again reason. say it again yeah the reason that all of these different things exist like again like homophobia racism all of these things it's so that we can sell you things it's an and economic or system that's right that's right racism is an economic caste system for anybody who doesn't understand this concept yet isabel wilkinson wrote a beautiful book called caste c-a-s-t-e where she looked at the caste system in india the caste system that created Nazi Germany and the Holocaust and the cats caste system that created slavery and racism against black people here in the United States of America. And I 